There is no way to map the depth and breadth of Bill O'Reilly's ego. It'd be like trying to measure the universe with a plastic ruler. And there's no way to catalog his mistakes, his distortions, his self-delusions, his hypocrisies, and his outright lies. It'd be like trying to count the grains of sand on Earth by hand. But on our number one story in the countdown, lately there is something new in the otherwise unchanging O'Reilly formula. The old man is getting sloppy. The programming editor of Broadcasting and Cable Magazine, Marissa Guthrie, conducted a question and answer session with Bill o the Clown and it produced a staggering variety of what at ESPN we used to call layups. Easily disproved, factually inaccurate, self-contradicting moments, some of them disproved by videotapes from his own shows, including one when he was confronted with the name of he who must not be named. Me. As ever, Bill O'Blurts, we translate and explain. First, the funniest, most embarrassing O'Reilly mistake. Ms. Guthrie, congratulations on 100 consecutive months as the top-rated on cable news. That's quite an accomplishment, especially in this day and age. Bill O, I don't think it's ever been done in any kind of TV milieu. We had our people research all programs going back to the 50s, like Gunsmoke and things like that. Nobody's ever stayed on top this long. See, you need new people. The Today Show has been in first place for 694 consecutive weeks as of last Friday, which calculates out to 166 consecutive months, every one of them since May 1995. Meet the Press has been in first place for 131 consecutive months ever since May of 1998. Bill, you're not only not the longest-running top-rated program ever in any kind of TV milieu, you're not even the second current longest-running top-rated program this week. How embarrassing for you. How embarrassing nobody at Fox knows enough about television to tell you this really obvious fact. Here are two embarrassing admissions that pertain to the president and ratings and what Billow thinks of his colleagues at Fox. I think that the ratings over the past three months prove beyond any doubt that many Americans are uneasy with the direction of the country. 62 million Americans voted against Barack Obama. Some of these people are concerned. Apparently not that many. 62 million people voted against Obama. And since the election, well, since October 31st of last year, O'Reilly's audience is, is up. Let me get the number. Oh, I'm sorry. Since October 31st of last year, O'Reilly's audience is down. 568,000 viewers a night. Down. Gosh, Bill, using your logic, doesn't that mean that more people are uneasy with the direction of your show than they are with the direction of the country? My program, I think, is the least skeptical of the so-called conservative programs. We give the president the benefit of the doubt, and we never cheap shot him. ruh -roh. <laughs> By implication, Bill is saying the other conservative shows do cheap shot him. So, Bill, does Sean Hannity cheap shot Obama? Glenn Beck? Bill, who will never go deaf listening to colleagues tell him he's a team player, didn't think this part of the interview through, did he? Nor this, the NBC part. NBC is corrupt, top to bottom. They say, oh, it's only MSNBC. No, it's not. It's across the board. What they did to the Brankini family was disgraceful. Every media outlet in the country should come in on that. The Brankini family? You mean Alexa Brankini of the It Happened to Alexa Foundation? What on earth are you talking about? Ms. Guthrie, what did, what did they do? Bill O. They attacked a foundation that helps rape victims and their families for having the MC a charitable event. We didn't attack them. We attacked you for having had the hypocrisy to attend a fundraiser for rape victims after you twice came out and blamed rape victims for their own victimization and, in one case, death. Ms. Guthrie, NBC has denied that they had anything to do with that. Bill o. That's a lie. NBC's air drove all of that. The Internet cannot get traction unless it has an outlet, a national outlet, and NBC provided that. I hope you're understanding this. There aren't two sides to this story. There's what happened, and the NBC lie about what happened. That's it. So let me see if I'm correctly summarizing your evidence of what you've previously described as a well-financed cabal to smear you about this. One, you called the raped and murdered Jennifer Moore moronic, and you described how her drunkenness and scanty attire led to her horrible death. Two, you said the raped and molested teenager Sean Hornbeck enjoyed parts of his captivity more than he had his life with his family. Three, in a bitter irony, you wound up headlining a fundraiser for rape victims, a fact promoted by the support group. Four, the irony was noted on several websites. Five, we raised it here. Six, Amanda Turkle wrote about it at thinkprogress.org. Seven, you sent an employee to follow her and stalk her in a car for two hours. Therefore, eight, this is a conspiracy against you. Bill, a rhetorical question in private. Has any doctor ever used the word megalomania to you? Two final and more humorous snatches of O'Reillyan buffoonery. The first about NBC chairman Jeff Zucker. Ms. Guthrie. Do you know Jeff Zucker? Bill O. Of course. I've known Zucker for a long time. Ms. Guthrie. So what do you talk about when you bump into each other? Bill O. I don't bump into him. He sees me. He runs. 
No one boasts more of physically intimidating others than does a coward. Oh, it's Zucker who runs, Bill. Twice in my lifetime, I have encountered Bill O'Reilly in person, once at a charity dinner and once on a baseball field. On both occasions, as I arrived, he backed up to a position about 20, 25 feet away from me. If I moved slightly toward him, say 18 inches closer, he backed up 18 inches. He stopped staring at me only when I looked at him. He is a big wuss. And finally, he is a big liar. On the zero to 100 scale of Billow's phony boasts, this might be the 100. Ms. Guthrie, obviously you and Keith Olbermann have ideological differences, but don't you think this feud is good for both of you? Billow, there is no feud. I have never mentioned the man's name in my life and will never mention it. Oh, so what is this then from your show on February 15th, 2007? Not only were there no apologies given and no pink slips issued for William Arkin's outburst, but Keith Obermann went out of his way to defend this valid criticism of our military. And there was the other time you mentioned my name on your show in 1998 when you also mispronounced it. I wouldn't want to play that tape, too, because then I would just be embarrassing you. And you're doing such a thorough job doing that yourself. That's countdown for this, the 2,151st day since the previous president declared mission accomplished in Iraq. I'm Keith Olbermann. Good night and good luck.